Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about the importance of having God's view of you. You know, there are a number of scriptures where men are pouring out their hearts in repentance that men have taken and made into complete doctrines demeaning humanity, diminishing individuals and making them live up to lower standards than God requires of them. You know, those verses in Psalms talking about where man's a worm and and Paul talking about he's doing the thing he didn't want to do. David talking about how he was conceived in iniquity. And that's been twisted into a whole doctrine that tells people they're born genetically into sin. They have original sin and they are sinners by birth. And it doesn't matter. They don't have to even sin their entire lives. They're already sinners by existing. Which is obviously insanity because it just basically makes the gospel into not being God's mercy, not being God's grace, but being a debt God owes people because he made them sinners by allowing the creation to exist in such a way that sin could be passed on, which of course it can't be. But men will tell you that. Why? Because they're justifying their own sins. It's easy to pat yourself on the back, act like everything's all right while you're sinning against God, you're sinning against your neighbor, you're sinning against everyone and just say well but you know we all are born in sin you know we don't have any choice in the matter we just have to live in this fleshly body until the day we die and it sounds all spiritual but it is spiritually dead belief because you as a Christian as the scripture says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts so if you're talking about you're living in the flesh you're talking about you're being carnal don't you understand the scripture says the carnal mind is enmity with god it is the enemy of god you can't be a christian and be carnally minded you can't be a christian and be walking in the flesh the scripture says be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap where they sow to the flesh shall reap destruction or to the spirit he reaps life. And there's a great, glorious, abundant life that Jesus came to give you. And it's by God's grace. Even though you did wrong, not by birth, you're not wrong by being born or existing. You made choices. You sought out many inventions. You made the choices to sin. You did that, but God in his mercy, and God who so loved the world, Sin is only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life is not just in the future. It's not something you get in the future. It's something you have and experience right here and now. And in that everlasting life is abundance, is opulence, is luxury, is more than enough. And when men get you thinking that you're limited, that there's not enough, that, you know, God hasn't provided a way, and we just got to live in sin every day. All these things teach you to be less than God wants you to be. And more importantly, than God has created you to be, enabled you to be. You'll live to a lower standard. You'll hold yourself to a limitation that doesn't exist. It's only a product of your mind because you believe the doctrines of men who make the word of God of none effect. But I'm encouraging you today to cast off those ideas. I don't care if it's been some church tradition for thousands of years. It doesn't make it right. The length of time people have been believing a false doctrine does not make it true. And I would encourage you to seek the Lord. Seek his wisdom. Let him show you the truth. Because listen, when you approach life as you're just a victim of life, you may say, well, I don't approach it that way. If you believe in doctrines like the original sin, that you are by heredity born in sin, you're by heredity a sinner, by birth, by mere existence, you're already a sinner, you believe in limitation. You don't believe what the scripture says, where it says that God created man upright. We are created upright. We live upright. Now, we can seek out many inventions. We can make choices that are contrary to that upright status. 
Just like Adam and Eve did. But you don't have to. You're not forced into that. You're not by genetics an incurable sinner. That's why you shouldn't go around saying you're a sinner saved by grace. The only way to make that statement true is to say you were a sinner who has been saved by grace. But you shouldn't be living in sin anymore. The scripture says, what shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Continuing in sin shows that we don't know the truth and the truth shall make us free. The servant of sin is, is bound by sin still. But you are a servant of the Lord. And this is important because people will take this and think about, well, he's talking about this sexual sin or this thing. No, I'm talking about all things that are contrary to the goodness of God in your life. That includes doctrinal beliefs that keep you limited. When God has this high standard for you and this high potential for you to reach and you're lowering yourself to this worldly, fleshly, devilish carnality of just being mediocre. You want to talk about one of the greatest sins of humanity? It's not the things that people would point to immediately. Whatever your chosen culture's particular pet sin is, it is mediocrity. It is being average. It's being like everyone else. It's conforming to this world. That's one of the worst sins you can do. Instead of being unique and like your creator God, you're conformed to the world and being mediocre, being average. And that's one of the most tragic things you can do. Because with that comes all the rest of the sins of the world. The lying, the murder, the lust, the adultery, all that stuff. But when you rise up to the high standards, the high calling of God in Christ, you cast all that stuff off. You live in an upright manner. You follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you live a life of abundance, of luxury, of opulence, of wealth, of riches, of health, of sound mind, of sober mind. My friend, there's a good life waiting for you right now. You're not limited. You're not restricted to some sinful life because some man told you that you were born in sin. Reject that nonsense and rise up and live the way Jesus wants you to live. Live that abundant life, that eternal life, right here and now. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.